Hi, I'd like to show you a simple camera that we've created to illustrate how we can run JMS transactions and JPA transactions simultaneously within the same route in different transaction branches. So I'll start off by showing this camel context XML file. As you can see, um, this is a Spring DSL file and our camel context starts here. So I'll walk you through it. We start off by picking up a file from the data and the directory, do some processing on it, and depending on the file name, we send it either to the rollback queue or to the incident queue. So what does the incident queue do? The incident queue uh, takes uh, the exchange and performs a multicast on it, so essentially sending the initial exchange to various endpoints. So you can see we are actually starting up a transaction here. So this is a transacted block and is referring to a specific uh, transaction policy, which we'll see later on. You can see the multicast has got parallel processing turned off because we want to ensure that every, every, everything that we do is performed within the same thread. Because as you know, transaction managers usually bind transactions to threads. So we first send to a uh, register call direct endpoint and behind this is a JMS transaction which we'll see in a second and we then execute a pipeline uh, which uh, persists a record on the database by calling out to a bean and using JPA so let's check out this register call uh, block the register call block as you can see it sends a message to a JMS message to Q called register call on the ActiveMQ broker and this is done within a new transaction as you can see it is also a transacted block but it's using a different transaction policy which we'll also see later on and after sending to that queue if the file name if the original file name contained the fail JMS token it will throw a random a random exception to uh, roll back the JMS transaction so if we go back we can see that all these actions are being performed within a do a try catch block and this is done because if an exception is thrown from the inner block we want to suppress it um, because otherwise the active MQ component the consumer endpoint would uh, roll back the exchange the message on the broker effectively sending it to the dead letter queue and we want to suppress that behavior for the sake of uh, this this example so this is the incident block and the rollback the rollback block does exactly the same thing but after persisting the record on the JPA uh, sorry on the JPA entity manager on the table it will throw an exception to roll back the entire JPA transaction so let's go back to the top where you can see the different transaction policies. You can see we're defining a JPA transaction policy and a JMS transaction policy. Each one of them is using their own transaction manager, but both of them are using the same propagation behavior because we want to create a new transaction every time we hit a transacted block. So that's why we use propagation requires in here. So uh, what I'll do is I'll bring up my terminal. You can see I have already deployed uh, the data source. So I'll deploy the bundles, uh, which comprise our solution, the DAO and the root to transaction manager bundles. For that, I'm using my cheat sheet. There you go. You can safely ignore that warning. It's thrown by Open JPA, but it doesn't J JPA. Sorry, but it doesn't affect us. There you go. So you can see in the log file that the file consumer is already showing activity pulling the directory. And uh, to monitor the JMS queues, we'll use JConsole. So you can see the register call queue has uh, no messages right now. And similarly for the active, uh, for the dead letter queue itself. So there you go. And uh, to monitor the items on the database, we're going to use H2, uh, the H2 console. And you can see there's currently no records in the database. So to start off, we'll, uh, sh I'll show you the example which uh, does not trigger any erroneous behavior. So basically, this file name doesn't contain any fail JMS or fail DB tokens. So I'll just copy that command down. There you go. And we should see a new message on the register call queue. There you go. You can see the encount the in queue count has changed. And we should also see a new record in the database. 
There you go. Okay. So the next behavior that we want to test is a failure in JMS and not a failure in the database. So we should see a new record in the database but no message on the JMS queue. There you go. Okay. So let's go to the database console. We see a new record has been inserted there, but no messages on the register call queue. Right. So let's do the inverse behavior now, which is JMS uh, successfully op uh, successfully operating and the database and a failure in the database uh, branch. There you go. So we should see no new records on the database. There you go. No new records but a message, a new message arriving on the register call queue. There you go, the, encount, the in queue count has changed to 2. And finally, we'll test the behavior where everything goes wrong. So, uh, JMS and the database fail. Copy and paste, there you go. So we should see no new records on the database and no new messages on the register call queue. And just to make sure that we don't see any new messages on the dead letter queue. There you go, in queue count zero. So the next thing I'd like to show you is how to configure Camel to use XA transactions across your JMS and JPA resources. For that, we've created a new project called Route1TX Manager, and we've split the configuration in two files, Camel Context and Spring Config. Right now we're looking at Sprint Config, and as you can see, we are importing the JTA Transaction Manager that the Ares project offers us, and which is included within Service Mix, and we're importing it uh, using an OSGI reference. So this Transaction Manager is offered by a server. It's offered as a service, and we're importing it under two different interfaces: a Transaction Manager standard. Java Transaction Manager interface and the Spring Platform Transaction Manager interface. We're also instantiating two different ActiveMQ connection factories, an XA connection factory and a non-XA connection factory, along with their corresponding um, connection pools, as you can see there. We're also creating uh, two ActiveMQ components within the Camel registry. One will be used with XA transactions, so we're using the pooled connection factory XA in the active MQ component and an active MQ no XA component. As you can see, the active MQ component which uses XA transactions is configured with transacted faults. This is because we don't want Camel to manage the transactions directly because the global transaction manager will do that for us along with the resource managers. And you can see we're also instantiating a resource manager here for active MQ. So let's go to the Camel context and you'll see that the difference, the main difference here is now we've consolidated our transact transaction policies into just one. So we only have one transaction policy and we're using the platform transaction manager for that. You can see that uh, depending on whether we want our JMS exchanges to be included in the XA transactions or not, we're using the active MQ no XA component and the active MQ normal component. So we've replaced um, the internal exchanges within this route with uh, the non XA components. And another difference is that the multicast will be uh, we have activated the stop and exception option because while we're processing the exchange, if anything fails, the XA transaction will be immediately rolled back. So we don't want the pipeline to continue in that case. And as you can see, in uh, both portions of the route, uh, we're using the same uh, spring transaction policy. So let's take this example for a spin. We're going to, I'm going to bring up my terminal, and I'm going to install the corresponding bundles, which in this case are the DAO JTA bundle, which is exactly the same as the previous DAO project, but it is JTA enabled. There you go. There you go. Once again, ignore the warning from OpenJPA. We can see our file consumer is already um, is already pulling the directory, and uh, we're going to show once again J console. I've cleared. Uh, we're going to show the queues in JConsole. I've cleared the counters, so you can see the dead letter queue and the register call queue are both on zero, and we'll start having some fun. All right. 
Let me just show you beforehand the database as well. There you go, you can see it's clear. So first thing, I'll copy an all OK example, which will insert a record in the database. There you go. And you can see, you will see that a message has been sent to the register call queue as well. There you go. And nothing on the download queue. So right now, here is what the difference is. Right now, we'll see how if the JMS part fails, the record won't be inserted on the database. And this is the difference with the previous example. So you can see there is no record there, and there is no uh, new message on the register call queue. We'll do the same with the inverse example, so basically the database failing uh, and JMS going OK. You can see no record in the database and no record on register call queue. And finally, we'll do the worst case of them all, which is uh, everything failing. And once again, we'll see that no record has been inserted and there is no new messages on the de on the register call queue. And similarly, you'll see no messages in the dead letter queue. There you go, and queue count zero.